Uh, before we look into recording audio into FL Studio, let's check out some settings that we need to know of. I'll go to Options here and click on Audio Settings. So over here, the first option is to select our input and output device. I have a Apogee Duet connected, so I have selected that. Over here, I can set the sample rate for the session. Now these options will vary depending on the audio interface you have connected to your computer. Right below here under the status section, we get some information on this audio device. So this interface has two inputs and two outputs. It also tells us a bit about the latency that is produced by this device. We'll get back to that in a second, but first let's talk about this auto close option. So when this option is on, once you tab away from FL Studio and look at any other application, the audio driver gets freed up by FL Studio and can be used by any other application. So you can see here right now I have tabbed uh, Safari, the browser, and the status in FL Studio indicates that it's disabled, but if I tab back, it's open again. If I turn off auto close, irrespective of if I have FL Studio in focus or any other application, the audio engine is always being used by FL Studio. I'm going to set the auto close option back on. All right, now let's talk about buffer length. This value here is indicated in samples, and in the bracket here we see the resulting overall latency that is produced by this buffer length. Back in the status section, we can see the latency from the audio interface. Input, output, as well as output plus plugins. So this tells us the latency that our current session is producing. And then over here, we can set the overall buffer length that FL Studio is going to use to process incoming and outgoing audio. Now, the rule of thumb is the smaller the buffer length, the quicker the audio output, so you have less latency. And the higher the buffer length, the greater the latency. Now, on the opposite side of that coin, if the buffer length is too small, your CPU usage does go up pretty significantly. And if the buffer length is long, your CPU usage is a lot less. So it's hard to define what this value should be set to. It really depends on your computer and your specific use case scenario. All right, so those are the main settings we need to know of before we start recording. The rest of the stuff here we can ignore for now. In the next tutorial, let's talk about file management.